Here are three ways that you can beat inflation in 2022. As you've seen in a previous video before, I talked a little bit about inflation and how inflation affects us as investors. If you remember, I referenced a Bank of America study which talks about millennials and how much money they have in the bank. Out of the study from Bank of America, they found that nearly 25% of millennials have around $100,000 or more in the bank. If these people did not have an investor mindset, they would have simply left that money in the bank, right? They're like, okay, well, I have $100,000. I don't want to lose it. So what am I going to do with it? I'm just going to put it in the bank, right? Because that sounds like the safest option there is. But is it really though? I would actually argue that it's one of the riskiest things that you could do with your money. If you just set your money into a checking account, into a savings account, into a 401k, it's probably not earning you very much. It's just sitting there. And so if we take a look at what's going on in the economy, we know that we are hit with massive, massive inflation. Generally speaking, in the overall market, inflation has been around 8%. Let's talk about those 25% of millennials. So these 25% of millennials, they have $100,000 or more in the bank. And if they did nothing with that money, Let's say two years ago, they made $100,000 and they're like, man, we made it. We have $100,000. Let's just put it in the bank and keep it safe. So we have the $100,000 in the bank two years ago, and then we experienced about 8% inflation two years ago. And then last year we had another 8% of inflation. So technically they lost 8% of that money both of those years. First year they lost 8%. Now they're down to 92 and then they lost 8%, around 8% of that $92,000, which is around maybe about $7,000. So let's call it $15,000 that they lost throughout this time. What that means is that if they look at their bank account from two years ago and they had one zero zero comma zero 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 hundred thousand dollars right? And if they look at their bank account today, it's still going to say that same number. They're still going to have the one zero zero comma zero zero zero. And that's the difficult part about inflation to understand, because if you're just thinking about it in a very simple way, you're like, OK, well, I had one hundred thousand dollars and I still have one hundred thousand dollars. Inflation isn't even real, right? It doesn't even seem real. But then you look at the value or the purchasing power of that currency and it's gone down. So now essentially you can buy only $85,000 worth of goods with that same $100,000 and that's inflation. And so leaving money in the bank, not doing anything is actually a very risky move. And so there are three different ways that I'm currently combating inflation. I have many other investments that are helping me do that as well. However, the main thing that I'm doing right now is real estate because we can all agree that real estate is worth X amount of money, right? So if we take a look at a house, that house took time to build. That house might have a view, maybe it's on the water, might have a, a waterfront beach, it might have a sunset or a sunrise view every morning. It might have certain aspects and features of the house that are simply valuable. So we find properties like this that have inherent value. So if we can agree that that property is worth something, that house, that condo, whatever it is, it's worth something. And so that something can be exchanged for US dollars. Now, if those US dollars go down in value, you're just gonna have to pay more of them. And so that's why we've seen such a steady rise in the price of real estate. And that's why real estate has created so many millionaires. Real estate just keeps trending up and up and up. Now it's not a constant trend up. We do have some real estate crashes. We do have some recessions, right? But if we understand the bigger picture, all that means is it's just a discount. It's like a house going on sale. So really, we want recessions to happen. We want these things to happen because we have cash that we want to deploy into these different houses, these properties, whatever it is. And so when we deploy our capital into these houses, these houses are rising in value because the dollar is going down. And so that's one way to combat inflation, real estate. That's a great example because it is always going to contain that value. And even if the dollar goes up or even if we stop using the dollar, that monetary value is stored in the house. And if you ever want to exchange it for a currency, you could sell it for euros, you could sell it for Bitcoin, you could sell it for whatever you want. You're going to get a fair exchange for your house. Now, let's talk about the second way. I mentioned cryptocurrency a little bit. I mentioned Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is an anti-inflationary asset. So what that means is that there is a limited supply. You can't make more Bitcoin. 
right? So people are mining Bitcoin, but the supply is capped. And what that means is that this asset is not going to experience inflation. It is actually a deflationary asset. Every time that Bitcoin is mined, we're getting closer and closer to that cap. So that means supply is limited, supply is capped. And as demand grows, guess what happens to the value of Bitcoin? The value of Bitcoin goes up because supply is not expanding, but demand is. As demand expands and supply remains stable, the value of that asset goes up. So that's another way to outpace inflation. Bitcoin is a valuable asset. Some people call it the only honest money on this planet. I mean, that's because you can't print more of it. There's a limited supply and everybody has visibility of everything. The third way that I'm combating inflation are luxury goods. So these might be luxury cars, exotic cars, right? Things that are valuable and have that inherent value. So maybe it's a really nice watch. Maybe it's a really nice car. Recently, there were some rumors that Lamborghini was going to discontinue their extremely large engines and they were gonna move to a more hybrid version. If you understand the dynamics of the vehicle market, you know that people who love Lamborghinis people who love Ferraris, they love those big engines. So that's a valuable asset. So now if you hear the news that something like that is going to be discontinued, people have loved these for decades. What do you think that is going to happen to the value of them? You're storing, you could literally park your value, that, that amount of currency in that car. And even if you did nothing, if you just parked it in your garage and you sold it in 10 years, you would most likely make money. It's naturally gonna be worth more US dollars. But also, when we have a discontinued product, demand is rising and supply is shrinking because guess what? How many of them do you think crash per year? Or maybe they get old or they get worn out and they start breaking. So if you literally just bought one and put it in your garage, you would most likely make money because yours is remaining in good condition while others are theoretically wearing down and they're they're getting crashed and they're getting ruined right so there's less and less good specimens so to speak on the market and demand is rising for those so um, another one i mentioned luxury goods is luxury watches so there's so many like extremely expensive watches on the market richard mill rolex patek AP, so many different watches out on the market that you could park your money in. Instead of having $100,000 in the bank, you could park that in a watch. You could put $100,000 into a watch and that watch maintains its value. And as inflation goes up, the value of that currency decreases and now it's that watch is naturally worth more dollars. So it takes more of those same dollars to buy that same asset. That's all I'm trying to get at. So guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Make sure you like, subscribe and comment and I will see you all on this next video.